All right, so I want to take a look at how to graph exponential functions with a base of e, or what we would say natural base exponential functions. So first off, we have to remember, we have to know that e is approximately 2.718. And if we're graphing, we're also going to need to know that e squared is approximately 7.389. And it will also be helpful to know uh, what e to the negative first, the reciprocal of e is. And that's about 0.368. Okay. So if we're talking about a function of the form a e to the rx, that's a natural base exponential function. This is a little bit different than a typical exponential function because I'm multiplying x by something in my exponent. Okay. Uh, a, uh, we expect it to be positive, so you note that over here. Uh, an exponential growth function will be when a is positive and r is also greater than zero or positive. Uh, and it will be an exponential decay function when r is less than zero. The idea being there, if uh, this is a negative number, for example, if I said y equals e to the negative x, well, that negative exponent means I actually have a reciprocal. And what I would have is 1 over e to the x. Since e is about 2.7, 1 over e is a number between 0 and 1, which is what gives us exponential decay. All right, so to graph a natural base exponential function, you're going to graph f of x equals e to the x uh, and apply whatever transformations. And it says this right here, but how we really want to do this, it's going to make more sense to graph everything but the translations. So let's take a look at how this works. Come down here, we'll do a very simple one first, just uh, f of x equals e to the x. Uh, this table is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, so I'm not going to use all this. I'm going to scratch some of this out. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have one column for x, uh, my inputs, and a second column for just y equals e to the x. Now, I'm getting all these numbers. Uh, some of them we just know offhand because, like I said, up top, we said what e, e squared, and so forth were. But you can also, of course, use a graphing calculator or even a scientific calculator, but we typically use the graphing calculator. All right, so first off, let's do the simple ones. e to the 0. Well, remember, e, or excuse me, for any number to the power 0 is just 1. e to the first is e, which is approximately 2.7. Uh, if we're graphing, uh, going beyond the nearest tenth isn't really useful. Uh, e squared is approximately 7.4 if I round to the nearest tenth. Okay, um, And then I want to consider the negative powers of e. Well, e to the negative first, the reciprocal of e, is about 0.3. And I will write 0.37, so that indicates to me it's maybe closer to 0.4. Whatever difference that makes when I'm graphing this. Uh, e to the negative second, as I look at my uh, calculator off screen, uh, is approximately 0.1353 or 0.14. So what I'm going to do is plot these points as best I can. Negative 2.14, I can't do that real well. It's just somewhere close to the axis. Uh, negative 1.37, so that's uh, a smidge less than 1 half. 0, 1 is right here. 1, 2.7 is about here maybe. 27.4. This grid is too small for 27.4, but other grids, uh, I could very easily use it. The other thing I need to keep track of is since it's 7.4, I know my next point should be somewhere up above this. So when I'm thinking about graphing this, I want to make sure I give myself, uh, my exponential curve a nice sharp turn in there so that I don't go over too far. So then you're going to put a curve through these points as best you can. Your asymptote Asymptotes work just as before. Out here, I've got a plus 0, which means my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, the x-axis. And I'm just going to draw this through here, get it close to the asymptote, and then turn and try and give it a natural curve. Just go up there. And y equals e to the x looks approximately like that. All right? Now the next thing I'm asked to graph over here is f of x equals e to the negative x. Well, if I put a negative sign in my exponent, what that's going to do is just switch around these uh, outputs. So when I say e to the negative second, e to the negative excuse me, when x is negative 2, 
When x is negative 2, I will have e to the negative negative second, which is e squared. If I put in negative 1, I'll have e to the negative negative 1, which is e to the first. So I just switch these values in this table over here to come up with this. And again, I don't think I need, really need these columns. So y is e to the negative x. And I'm just going to switch these values that are over here. So 7.4, 2.7, 0, 1. Uh, 1 will give me 0.37. Negative 2 gives me 0.14. So again, I'm going to plot those. 0, 1. 2.7 is maybe right here-ish. 1.37 is about here. 2.14, again, can't draw that real accurately. And I know that as I come up here, it's going to move up pretty fast. I'm not going to see it hit this next uh, vertical line right here, this next part of my grid. So, as best you can, put a nice curve through it with a natural turn in there and then draw your curve close to the asymptote. And like I said, if you're graphing an exponential, you have to know that it doesn't actually touch the asymptote. Uh, sorry, that was a little bit low. Uh, but there's the curve. I just plotted the points. They're just, it's really just a reflection of this graph in the y-axis is what's happening. Um, when you graph your asymptote, remember we have to know that it doesn't actually touch uh, that the asymptote, but uh, it does, uh, the way we draw it, it's going to look like it does touch it. And again, it was just e to the negative x, so the asymptote was y equals 0. All right, let's take a look at some transformations. For the next one, I have f of x equals e to the x plus 1 minus 5. Now, I know how transformations work. x plus 1 means I should go 1 to the left. And minus 5 means I go down 5. But more than that, I have to remember that if I'm going down 5, that's also going to change my horizontal asymptote. It will no longer be the x-axis. It will be the line y equals negative 5. So if you want to graph this, again, uh, I, don't, I don't really need this column right here. Let's consider our parent. Let's consider e to the x. And again, these are the same points I have from before. This is 0.14. This is 0.37. 1, 2.7, and 7.4. Okay, so I will plot the points of my parent as best I can. Something like this. And since it's not the curve that we are actually graphing, please do not put a solid curve through it. Remember, if you are graphing a function in a parent, uh, you've got to use a dashed curve. Or another thing that can be useful is to use some colored pens. Since I am translating down five units, I get a new horizontal asymptote. Uh, and when I get that new horizontal asymptote, I have to remember to draw that dashed curve. So one, two, three, four, here's y equals negative five. So I draw the dashed curve for the asymptote right here. And now what I'm gonna do is come back up to these points that I had. I had to go left one and down five, so I will do that for each of these, I will just go left 1 and down 5. So if I go left 1 and down 5, that will put me down here very close to the asymptote. If I go left 1 and down 5 from negative 1.37, I end up at negative 2. And again, 0.37 units above the asymptote y equals negative 5. Here's 0, 1. If I go left 1 and down 5, I end up at negative 1, negative 4. Here, 2.7 excuse me, 1, 2.7, I go to the left 1, and as I go down, be careful how you're counting this, once, twice, three, four, five times. Okay, we notice a little imperfection in our graph here, so that won't usually, uh, that shouldn't be an issue. It's just a mistake in this particular set of notes. All right, um, now I could stop there. Uh, I do know that this is the next point, so I could probably try and do that from here. So 7.4 would mean 7.4 units above this asymptote. Well, 5 units above will take me to the axis. 7 units takes me to 2. 7.4 would mean I'm going to be right about here, maybe. And then as best as I can, I want to put a curve through this. And I'm going to switch to a different pen so you can see this a bit better. Again, right there. There it is, the asymptotic behavior, getting really close to the asymptote. 
and give it a nice good curve. And it's exponential growth, so you should expect it to rise very sharply. Okay? And that is our curve. Now, if we're asked about domain, range, all that other stuff, uh, of course, we should know how to do that. I'm not going to run through all of that right here, but I will make a note. The domain, as for any exponential function, uh, is negative infinity to infinity. The range, well, uh, our y's get really close to this asymptote without ever quite touching it. So it's all the y's that are greater than negative 5, or in interval notation, parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, infinity, parenthesis. Uh, end behavior is another important thing here. Remember, the end behavior. What we see here is as x approaches positive infinity, the right side of this graph is shooting up towards positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, the left side of the graph is going down, getting flat against the asymptote. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching negative 5. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the last example that is right here. This one has a stretch uh, and a reflection, which makes this somewhat... Uh, trickier. So here I actually will use uh, three columns. I'm going to make a column for e to the x. I'm going to scratch out y here. And what I want to put in here is negative 2 times e to the x. Remember, that's how we do this if we have a reflection or if we have a vertical stretch or compression. So again, I start off with these same points. And I said before, uh, nearest tenth is about all you can use if you're graphing um, by hand because you can't get much more accurate than that. But since I'm doubling these, that's why I've included 0 0.14, 0 0.37. When I double them, having that extra accuracy will help me get a better image of what I should see here. So negative 2 e to the x, what that is going to do is take all of these outputs and just multiply them by negative 2. So 0.14 should become negative 0 0.28. 0 0.37 should become negative 0.74. 1 becomes negative 2, 2.7 becomes negative 5.4, and 7.4 will become negative 14.8, which most of the time you're not going to use, and definitely on this graph, this graph is not large enough to use that. Now here's the trick, what I said before. Uh, in the instructions it said to graph the parent, y equals e to the x. Well, yes, generally we do want to graph the parent, but the trick with exponentials is since the parent and its stretched or compressed or reflected version looks so different, what you really want to do is graph the uh, function that has a reflection or compression or stretch. If there is a reflection, compression, stretch, or reflection, this is what you want to graph. And then you can just translate the points. So I'm going to graph these points right here. I'm not going to use this column. You can cross it out if you'd like. I'll just kind of gently go like this so you can still read it. All right, so negative 2, negative 0.28, maybe about there. Negative 1, negative 0.74, so that's almost 3 fourths, so about there maybe. 0, negative 2, and again, so the graph is a little bit wonky. Uh, 1, negative 5.4, well, negative 5.4 is about here. So this is the graph with everything but the translations. This is y equals negative 2 e to the x. I'm sorry, I, I went a little bit off the uh, image again. Sorry. That is y equals negative 2 e to the x. Now, our function was negative 2 e to the x plus 1 which means I'm shifting all these points up one unit. I will get a new asymptote of y equals 1. So I will make sure to sketch that asymptote on here. There it is. Okay, And I'm going to take all these points and just move them up by 1. Now if you have a really simple translation like this. In all honesty, I probably could have just drawn that asymptote and adjusted my points uh, from the very beginning to be based off of this asymptote rather than off the x-axis. But There's no specific need to do it exactly that way. So I see these points and to graph this curve, what I want to do, again, curve gets really close to the asymptote, infinitely close. And then what I need to do is just kind of curve through this. 
And so that heavier curve right there, which is in purple, that is the function I was asked to graph. Hope that makes sense. And good luck.